Hi, David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech Tech. Now, this is the channel where we do attempt to not only give you cutting edge technology, but also do so very accurately. Now, what I would like to do here is to address some of the spin off comments that have come up on my uh, lobe center line angle story, uh, episode 85. Now this story has gone down very well with professional cam people and they're not pleased about it but not one single professional cam grinder has contradicted it. Not one. The only people who seem to be able to find fault with it are those people who are not experts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to address some of the comments and straighten up some of the things that I guess I should have straightened up before. Now I only recently looked at this uh, video to see how it was doing and it's doing very well. I mean it's over 500 comments there and uh, in a year it's had over 110,000 people view it and I've looked at the stats and they're consistently way above normal. So, in essence, for the subject concern, this video has been very well received. But anyway, on with the show here. Now I'm going to have to put my glasses on here for the simple reason that I've got to look at some small text on my laptop. Right, here we go. Now, the area that seems to be causing problems is people are still equating idle quality and lobe center line angle. Now, I want to make one statement here. The idle quality has nothing to do with the lobe center line angle. Get that through your head. Now, somebody's going to say, well, of course it does. If you spread the lobe center line angle, they idle better. No, if you cut the duration, they idle better. Why? Because cutting the duration actually cuts the overlap. At the end of the day, the idle quality is totally due to the overlap. Nothing else. That's as far as cam specs are concerned. It's also uh, uh, lots of other things, but as far as the cam is concerned, idle quality is only affected by the overlap. Now, if you have to spread the lobe center line angles to get idle, what you are doing, in essence, is sacrificing torque and horsepower for idle quality. Why would you want to do that? If you just cut down on the amount of duration, the overlap will become smaller and the engine will idle and you will not have paid the price of losing torque. You may even still have more horsepower because now your lobe center line angle is right and you'll have the idle because your overlap is right. So, do not equate lobe center line angles with idle quality. If you call a cam company and they say, well, you'll need to have it on a wider lobe center line angle than that, otherwise it won't idle, you are talking to a cam company that does not have up to the minute information on it. Just refer them to some of my, one of my videos. No, I'm going to put a list of the videos in that they need to see. Trust me, they're on the wrong route. Now, here's a comment that Scooter, he was the guy that was kind of the boss at Comp Cams before it was sold out. He saw my program, my cam program, that this episode 85 has been drawn from. That's the basis of calculating the lobe center line angle and he remarked quote David you certainly have done your homework now why after admiring the program he didn't pick it up I'm not too sure what the situation is there but this program will allow any cam company to design or rather spec out superior cams First time. Not second, third, fourth, first time. And also, 
that means that you guys will be getting a better cam. Now, in my time, I've had to des design, and in that respect, mostly respec cams to get a better result for cam companies. And I'll tell you now, my cams have always outpowered the ones they originally had. And those companies, those cam companies that have taken them up, now I want you to listen to this, you doubters, have made millions and millions of dollars. Literally, that's not, that is not a figure of speech, that is reality. So, those cams have to do everything from be great street cams, to great race cams. They do just that. Now let me read out this comment this guy made and you will see how people are still drifting off into the old way of things. What DV says about his cam specs may be right, comma, may be wrong. However, a very large amount of us need something that is also driven on the street. Exactly. Wouldn't you like to have your cam right for street application you need good torque and low speed and idle i hate to be fitting a cam with a lobe center line angle of 103 degrees into my engine why if it required 103 degrees and it didn't idle that's because you chose one with too much duration it would have no vacuum and idle like a bucket no it wouldn't if you had the right duration for it you'd have the right overlap for the idle and the right duration to make the best power curve. Not to mention the effects on EFI with that huge, unused, unstable manifold, manifold vacuum. Uh, no, if you've got the right overlap, that'll work just fine. It's a case of compromise to get something that meets all aspects of what you're going to do. No, the first thing you have to do is get your lobe centerline angle right then everything comes from that. To get it right and an idle that you want, you have to pick an appropriate overlap, which means that if you've now got the overlap and the lobe centerline angle, your duration is now dictated by the, what those two produce. And let's face it, if you're, pro st if you're in pro stock, you know what's going on already. Otherwise, you're simply never going to last. Not quite sure what that is he means by that. I'm saying that you know what's going on already and you're never going to last into the uh, uh, race getting through to the end of it. Now just as a point my program predicts exactly what is required for a pro stock engine. Given all the data I've put in it comes out exactly what the guys are using. Not nearly exactly to the degree um, do I need to say any more so let's get down to iron tax here at the end of the day what you have to do if you're following through on episode 85 is forget all that you've no I shouldn't use the word forget dismiss for a moment all that you've ever learned about lobe centerline angles because unless you've seen this video before whatever you learn has a 99.9% .9 chance of being wrong so put it aside and with a clear mind and no previous bias and no bias because you think that what's this journalist got to telling everybody how to do this when you know, he's supposed to be a writer. No, I'm a research engineer. Go in and look at it with no bias, no malice of forethought, no preconceived notions, and focus on what I say. I don't want any of you saying, well, you should have learned it, because I probably did say it, right? You just missed it. It's an hour of new stuff that you may not have heard before. Now, of course, if you're an expert, the first 10 minutes is showing you what all the facets of the cam uh, is. You know, it's the lift on it, what's that, how, how you get uh, lobe center line angles, what, what they relate to, all the drawings and all that to explain to a beginner what's going on. But from 10 minutes on, 
it's all about stuff that I don't care how much experience you've had with cams. Watch it. You will find that if you have not seen it before, the chances are better than 99%. You've got it wrong. Now, with that, I want to say that there's some other factors that are involved here. And so I'm going to recommend some videos that you watch down in the uh, header section here. And what they do is they explain how it's a good idea to get the compression ratio matched up to the duration you think the engine wants. And uh, a, a few other things, right, that'll all be in there. So before any of you start claiming that this is wrong and that's wrong, watch those videos closely. And let's see where you get to on this. The program has proved itself time and time again. Probably in a little while, I will get to demonstrate this program on my uh, Paratek 10 channel. Now, good news for you guys with LS is I think that I've figured out all the constants involved for them. So the program will be good for big block Chevy, small block Chevy, uh, LS engines, and small block Ford, and big block Ford, that's Windsor engines, not so much Cleveland engines because they're canted valves, so they take some different constants. Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully you learned something from that. If you did, please subscribe. If you didn't, well, that's the best I can do, I'm afraid. But please subscribe, notify, comment, <laughs> get plenty of comments that's not going to be a problem and if you think that I'm delivering stuff that is important that super thanks would be a great idea so thank you for watching